All right. In today's video, we're going to finish going through Upper Norfair, and if we have the time, we're also going to cover the movement going to uh, Fantoon and Wrecked Ship. So let's get started on this. If you're running the late croc route, what you'll do in this room is just go ahead and run, jump across, and go through the door. Um, if you're doing the early croc route, you'll actually go down there, and we will cover that in just a minute. Um, in this next room, uh, basically you just want to arm pump, and then uh, right underneath this mound in the ceiling. So basically you're going to pass through uh, all these blocks, kill all these b-toms, and then as you're running under this mound, you want to shoot, you want to hold your shot. That's going to open the door uh, just based on the position that you shot it from. Um, and then there's a couple ways that you can do this next this next part. Um, I haven't quite figured out the uh, the ceiling jump here, so we're just going to cover the, uh, the lower jump. There is a method where you can jump somewhere around here, um, basically, and hug the ceiling with an angle down that will also accomplish the same thing, but I haven't been able to figure out um, exactly what makes it work or not work. So uh, what I do is I jump through the door. Um, you want to jump pretty low, but not as low as possible, and also not too high. Um, going through the door, you want to hold angle down, okay, and down. Now what this is going to do, since we have a charge shot already set right here, uh, the angle down is going to um, make sure that we break spin. Uh, you also want to have shoot released at this point, and the angle down will take priority with the first position. Okay. Um, notice that we're also holding down on the D-pad. So on the next frame, Samus is going to start aiming down. All right. But since the since the angle down frame is first, that's what the beam does. It does an angle down shot. And since we have so much forward speed from Speed Booster, that angle down shot will actually hit this door so that it opens. The aim down prevents us from bonking the save station here. So it shrinks our hitbox so that we can just jump right on through the save station. Um, and essentially doing those inputs together um, buffers everything in a way that it's it's just automatic basically. So uh, you want to land on the edge here, uh, wait for just a brief moment while the door finishes opening, and then run and jump through the door. So at this point we're going to be in business center. Um, before we continue on the late croc route, I'm going to uh, pivot and we're going to discuss the early croc stuff. So if you're running late croc, uh, you can go ahead and skip ahead in this video. If you're running early croc, stay tuned, and that's what we're going to cover next. All right, so let's talk about some early croc stuff. First, just a quick disclaimer. It's been a couple years since I ran this route, uh, so there may be some stuff that I'm uh, not remembering very well, and I apologize for that. The other thing is that when I did run this route, I didn't necessarily go for all of the most optimal strats, so I will try to discuss what those strats are, um, but I'm not going to have visual examples of, of what they would look like. And there's definitely going to be some stuff that I miss. Uh, for example, in Wrecked Ship with Grapple Beam and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so um, if you're doing Lake Croc, then obviously uh, the first route divergence that you're going to come across is that we are going to go down through this room instead. So you see that instead of jumping across the gap, I run off and then I angle down, which stops the, uh, the forward momentum there. I shoot as I'm falling. Um, that first angle down shot is to open the gate that's down here on the bottom left, and then the down shot is to uh, remove these blocks so we can fall through. So you see that this gate is opening from the angle down shot. Uh, you want to do a gap skip across there. Uh, that will actually fix this door just a little bit. Um, and then obviously you want to open the door preemptively and run on through. So um, in this next room, you can run off and uh, do a downturn kago through this uh, this gamer guy. I think they're stone gamers or something like that. In some categories, you may see somebody shoot a super missile um, on the wall or on this platform or something to essentially shake the room and make this guy fall off of this platform. That is something that we do in Lake Croc. I'm not sure why I didn't do it here, but it's probably because um, at the time I had decided that saving that super for the croc fight was a was a better better idea. So downturn Kago through the gamer. Uh, wait until you're past this guy to shoot, because if you shoot before that, your shot is going to get eaten. Um, so shoot to open the door, and then uh, you just want to fall on through the door. And then uh, this room, basically, you just want to dash, jump across the gap, 
jump across this gap, jump, shoot, uh, select your super missiles since you're gonna need those to open this next door. Um, and then in this room, uh, I personally found it fastest to stop, uh, angle down, shoot the, shoot the door, run forward and fall in. Another thing that you might see people do is not stop, run forward, uh, shoot the super down and then quick drop through the door. In my experience, that was always a frame or two slower, um, but you know, obviously uh, do whatever is comfortable for you. So, all right, so let's talk about Krokemeyer here. Uh, this fight is both straightforward and not, uh, so I'll do my best to explain kind of what's going on here. But essentially, um, at the start of the fight, the thing that is most important, and it, it may be the most important thing in the fight in general, we want to do as much damage in this opening phase to Krokemeyer as we can because he's going to essentially pull all of that damage together and do a set number of steps back afterward. So you see that I started off by running forward and then uh, crouching on this little, this little plant here. I also have missiles selected and basically we wait for Croc to swipe three times and then he's gonna open his mouth. When he opens his mouth, that's when we want to do our, our first set of damage. So you see I shot one, two missiles and then I uh, stood up ran forward and shot a super missile. Okay, so what we're doing there, um, basically we are firing the first two missiles which move slower from a stationary and crouched position. And then we squeeze in a super at the very end of that by both standing up and running forward to Doppler the missile so that it will um, connect just barely in time before his mouth is closed. See that, one, two, three, okay. And then as he's stepping back, you see that I fire another missile here, okay? Um, the, the reason that we're doing that, so if you time these first few shots correctly, he'll quickly open his mouth again as he's stepping back. So watch this, see that? And you can squeeze in more damage on that secondary mouth open right there. If you have enough supers, it's a good idea to try and squeeze another super in right there. Um, but in this situation, I think I wanted to save this super missile for some reason or another. I'm not 100% not sure on that. Um, all right, so we start off with this opener, one, two, three, and then we count how many steps he's doing back. So basically you're going to want to figure out how much damage that you're planning on doing in the beginning of the fight. And then based on how much damage you actually do, you need to count the number of steps back that he does to time your next shot. Three, four, five, six, seven, so for me, that was seven steps. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six after the last piece of damage there. And then I release that charge shot, hoping that he would open his mouth, okay? Now, sometimes he's not going to open after he's done stepping back. Sometimes he'll do more, uh, more leg swipes here uh, instead of immediately opening, and then he'll open his mouth. So uh, let's just see if that happens anywhere in this fight. And of course it didn't. <laughs> so um, basically you just need to be anticipating that he's going to be either swiping or opening his mouth. Um, the less swipes you can get, the better. So this fight was really, really good because there were no, no extra swipes. So then you just count one, two, shoot, 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 one, two, shoot one. If he does happen to swipe, you'll just need to recharge another shot and then shoot him. Um, it's something, it's not too hard to, to get a feel for it, but it is definitely something that you want to practice. Because any shots that you miss, he's going to have an opportunity to step back to the left towards Samus, and every time he does that, it extends the fight even longer. So the, um, the, whole, the whole objective of this fight is to push him back far enough that he gets onto these platforms back here and then falls in the acid. So now that he's fallen in the acid, we can go ahead and jump across, do a wall jump up and grab this energy tank. And then uh, right here, you'll see that I'm holding a charge shot. I moonwalk back to the um, the edge of this ledge here so that Samus's back foot is um, off here. And then I jump, so just back a little, little further more. Jump, and then after bonking the ceiling, I release the charge shot. Now you're not gonna be able to hear this because we don't have the game audio um, playing in these tutorials. Um, I've explained before that's for a few different reasons. Uh, it is it is unfortunate because there's certain things like this audio cue here that you're not going to be able to hear in the tutorial. 
But basically, if you do this correctly, you'll hear a door open. So charge, jump, shoot, you'll hear a door open. Assuming that you hear that door open, it means that the door on the left side of the room is now open. That was a wraparound shot. And um, basically, the best way to explain that is that every room uh, has copies of it outside of the room. So on the right side of this wall is actually uh, the left side of this big long room where there's a door over here uh, on the far, far left. And we're able to interact with the copy of that door on the right side of this wall. So if you open one door, they, they all, all copies of that door open, essentially. So the reason that we're doing that wraparound shot to open this door is so that we can go ahead and just shine spark through. Now you see, I actually, I got a spike suit here. Um, that's not super beneficial in this route. It's slightly beneficial, uh, but it's not really a big deal. Um, the biggest benefit to it is that it makes collecting these drops and then shine sparking, um, or shine sparking and collecting the drops um, much easier. Because if you didn't have a spike suit here, what you would have to do uh, to do that same strat is essentially do a short charge in this space which can be pretty difficult for people. Just to, to break down the way that a spike suit works really quickly, I do have dedicated tutorials on this, but essentially you need to have a shine spark charged, you need to be in morph, and then the frame after you touch spikes, you need to unmorph. Okay, so we touch the spikes and then we unmorph. And then I think it's 10 frames later, but it might be nine or 11 frames. Um, and it also depends on uh, which frame after touching the spikes you unmorphed because two of the frames will work. You need to activate your shine spark when Samus is in this crouched pose and it needs to be, um, there's there's two frames that will work if you unmorphed on the first frame after touching the spikes. Only the second frame will give you the spike suit. So if you do, if you were to do the shine spark on the first crouch pose frame right here, you would actually not get the spike suit. We have the second crouch frame here. Then I activate the shine spark and Samus just kind of hangs in the air right here. That means that we have a spike suit. So a uh, spike suit essentially allows us to use a shine spark whenever we want. Um, the downside to this is that any movement that would normally activate that shine spark will still activate it. So if we were to do a straight jump here without holding angle down, that would activate it. If we were to uh, do a spin jump and then press angle up or up, that would activate it. Uh, you you hopefully get the idea. So you see here, I'm clear over on the far right side of the screen and I'm holding angle down. Uh, this is in preparation to time my jump, which I do just as this hand here touches the floor. So right there, I jump. And then as I'm about halfway down the screen, this is a pretty specific position. Um, I release angle down while still holding jump. That gives us the wind up shine spark uh, frames right there. And then while still holding jump, I press left, which activates the shine spark and sends us through the door. If you don't get the spike suit and you don't get the short charge here, you probably still want to do a shine spark through the next room because uh, this room without space jump can be pretty slow if you have to fall down and then jump back up. If you can shine spark across, you just get straight to the door. So from here, um, so I go ahead and missile this door. I guess I'm conserving supers. That makes sense. And we run through and grab the power bombs. As you exit this door, you want to make sure that you have enough uh, run speed leaving this room. So you kind of want to land over here by the statue. Go ahead and run through the door. And then after exiting the door, you want to aim down so that you don't land on any of these ledges here. And you want to shoot down so that you can open this door down here and not bonk it as you're falling through. For this room, we want to do a moonfall and then fall down on the right side here. Um, basically, um, I align myself with this black space here between uh, this background cue and this background cue. So we fall down and then after landing, we run off to the left. Um, we want to align ourselves with this edge here, which is why I turned right there. So I turn right to bonk it and then I turn back left, aim down and shoot to open this door. Immediately after shooting, I morph, and the reason that we're morphing is uh, two reasons. So one, we want to morph so that we won't bonk the door, and two, we need to lay a power bomb right here. So we lay a power bomb in this room. That's going to clear all of these blocks that are in our in our way. And as it's exploding, you can um, start running to the left. 
you see I did a stutter here. So I stutter and then I do a one tap short charge. And that gives us speed booster echoes just before we hit these blocks. If you do a non-stutter short charge, that I think might still be possible, but it's gonna be tighter. Um, alternatively, you can also run over to the right and give yourself more space uh, to do this, uh, this speed booster here. Then you just wanna jump across. You want to angle down, shoot as you're passing these rippers up above. So see, there's a ripper there, and then we angle down, shoot the door aim down, and then mock ball, speed ball through the door. From there, you just wanna unmorph, shoot to reveal the grapple beam, and collect it. As we leave this room, you want as much run speed as you can get. Um, you also wanna make sure that you don't bonk the door. And the easiest way to do that is to have power bombs selected while collecting the grapple beam, and then switch to grapple beam. You can just hold dash and right this whole time and open the door with grapple beam there. If you don't open the door with grapple beam, uh, the the other beam that you would use will take too long to get to this door and you'll actually bonk before getting through uh, if you just dash the whole time. So that's why we open the door with grapple beam. And then uh, you wanna jump off the edge of this platform here and you want to grapple on this ripper and then this ripper and then just grab the missile pack. If you're struggling with those grapples, alternatively, you can do a shine spark up here uh, from from below uh, either before or after probably before would be better uh, grabbing grapple beam um, you can also do a speedy jump and wall jump up here uh, but grappling the the rippers if you do it effectively is going to be the fastest way to grab this missile pack so after grabbing the missile pack you just want to jump down here you want to do a mock ball under that gap right there unmorph shoot the door and then jump up through the door okay a few more rooms here so after jumping through the bottom door, uh, we typically want to go up either the left or the right side. In this, in this run, it looks like I'm going up the right side. I would honestly actually recommend going up the left uh, these days. And that's something that I'll be covering later um, in, the, in the late croc section here. Um, but honestly, uh, just approach the room in whatever way seems more comfortable for you. So in this example, um, I run to the right, I spin jump up, and I ledge grab and then super the door and run through the door like that. In this room, um, since we don't have spring ball, we need to mock ball under this gap, unmorph, run forward, and then damage boost over to the right. So mock ball, jump, jump as you're uh, going down this mound right here, right here, and mock ball, unmorph, jump forward, damage boost. If you do this correctly, I think you might be able to make it all the all the way to the missile. I'm not 100% sure on that. You definitely could if you jumped toward the second spike here. But if you happen to fall short like that, just go ahead and jump up, um, get onto the ledge. I do a down grab here. Collect the missile, and then um, after collecting the missile, you want to run back to the left, damage boost off the second set of spikes, get back um, over here, morph, shoot, as you are running forward right here so that you can shoot again right here to open the door without doing an arm pump that could potentially uh, make you fall off of this slope here. You can see if we do this early shot here, Samus's arm cannon is already forward. So the second shot won't result in an arm pump. That will open the door. And then um, optimally what you wanna do is a, a late jump, a wall jump check through this door. I kind of mess it up here. You can, charge a shine spark right here as you're running through the door and then um, shine spark straight up from here that's very slightly slower in my experience than optimal wall jumps up the room but it's up to you what you want to do count the number of wall jumps that you're doing to know um, how high you are relative to getting to the top of the room um, in this situation since i didn't get the speedy jump out of the door i count one two three four five six seven eight and then i know i'm at the top if you do get the speedy jump out of the door it's usually five or six depending on how efficient you are with your wall jumps um, that's just something that you'll need to figure out and then after the last wall jump you want to angle up shoot this door preemptively so that we can just jump on through as you're exiting this room you want to be hugging the right wall that will allow you to hold angle down as you enter this room, and you'll automatically ledge grab onto uh, this, this little corner here. From there, um, in this route, you'll probably wanna do at least one farm on these bugs. So go ahead and collect those drops, jump up, shoot the door, 
and run on through. In this room, you can uh, you can do a bounce ball or you can just try to spin jump across and then jump across. Looks like I was short here, so I did a wall jump so I didn't fall in the acid. Um, and then as you're leaving this room, uh, you want to find some cues for a couple things. Uh, you want to find a cue for where to shoot. So it looks like I'm doing an angle up shot on these plants here next to the skull. Those open the door and then you want to jump um, at a time that you can turn into the door. So it looks like I'm jumping around the time of this weed, but it looks like I didn't have quite enough speed to make it up past this corner and into the door. So I end up falling down and then I have to jump back up through. You don't want to just run forward and then jump in because that has a, a high potential of giving you a really bad door transition. So if you're not gonna go for the turn on the ceiling up through the door, However you decide to jump through this door, try and make sure that the, the door is centered as much as possible. In this room, we want to farm uh, both of the CAC attacks here. Supers are really important. Um, after farming the CACs, you wanna jump up. Uh, I go up the middle here. Some people will ledge grab here and then jump up through this one tile gap here on the right. I ended up abandoning that because it's hard and it's not really faster if you do this part really well, so. Um, you can decide whether you want to do that or not. And then you do want to jump through this door as you're leaving to fix the door transition. Just try to make sure that you don't hit this ceiling before you actually make it into the door. All right. So in this room, the first thing we need to do is get up here. Uh, from here, you can do an upshot to try and hit the guy early. Um, you can also just ledge grab here and take care of him with missiles or more shots or whatever. I'm not 100% sure what I was doing there. I just bonk into him, but um, you can run and jump forward and then delay your grapple shot until near the end and get across in just one short swing like that. Um, then you want to have super missiles selected, grab the missile pack, and uh, shoot the gate, obviously. Uh, briefly pause before the gate, open the door with wave beam, and run on through. So, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward room there. Uh, not a whole lot to it. Um, and now we're back in business center. So this is where routes kind of reconverge uh, for the time being. There are a couple of different strats, um, so I will uh, cover those independently as well. Um, obviously for business centers specifically, we are starting at the very bottom of the room instead of uh, one door up. So that changes the strat for this room a little bit. Um, to start off, you wanna run forward and do an upshot to kill this Nova so he's not in your way. Then you just wanna jump up and ledge grab here, do another upshot, jump up, uh, the, the upshot was to kill that Nova, ledge grab another upshot to kill that Nova, jump up, and uh, go up to the elevator. Now, in late croc, we're going to be going to grab ice beam at this time, but in early croc, uh, we don't actually grab ice beam yet because it's overall slower to do that. In late croc, we have to grab ice beam, Otherwise, we're not going to be able to get to spring ball later in the run. So that's why there's a discrepancy there. Uh, but as far as early croc, uh, the idea is just that you want to go straight up to the elevator right here and go up the elevator. All right, so we're back in business center here. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple different ways you can do this. If you need drops, uh, you're gonna wanna collect more drops from these Novas here. In this situation, I decided I didn't need drops. So I go ahead and skip this guy. Um, if you do want to farm this first Nova, you can do so by holding an angle up shot coming out of this door. That will buffer the shot and immediately kill this guy, and then you would just basically jump up and grab his drop. Since I'm not grabbing it, I do a ledge grab here. Then I do a spin jump and ledge grab here. Since I don't need drops, I'm not going to worry about trying to collect this guy. Uh, I just do a straight jump up, angle up shot to the left to kill this guy preemptively. Do a down grab, run forward, and jump through the door. One thing to keep in mind about this door, the further and higher you jump into it, the better the door transition is gonna be, but you'll have less run speed going into the next room. And I'll explain why that matters uh, right here. So in this room, uh, the idea is that we need to make it under both of these gates um, and then do a jump ball through the door, okay? Um, you can see that I'm doing a bunch of arm pumps here. Uh, that's, you know, obviously arm pumps are usually a good thing. They're generally going to save you some time. However, um, they do mean that we are making it further left into this room with less run speed. 
and this gate here is going to activate as we reach a certain proximity distance to it. So if we activate this gate and don't have enough run speed, we're not going to be able to make it under the gate. And you see how close this is here? For me personally, um, just because of the grip that I'm using, for me to shoot in this room, I need to release dash and then repress it. So you can see those inputs right there. I'm releasing and repressing dash. Um, if you can avoid doing that, you definitely should. Uh, but just one thing to, to keep in mind is that if I had released dash for even a couple frames longer than I did, I would have bonked this gate. So if you need to forego arm pumps in order to hold dash the whole time, for example, I definitely recommend doing that. Um, and also, again, keep in mind that um, the less run speed you have entering here, the harder it's going to be to make it underneath both of those gates. So yeah, just uh, just keep all of that in mind. Um, all right, after you pass the gate, you want to do a jump. Um, you'll hit the ceiling and then you want to morph. That is going to bounce you across this room. We select missiles as we're bouncing uh, so that we can use a missile to open this door. The reason we shoot a missile is because wave beam will sometimes get blocked by this guy, so uh, just more consistent to use a missile there. Jump across the gap and uh, go ahead and jump through this door. All right, and then in this room, what we wanna do is we wanna jump, morph, uh, turn left while we're still in morph ball. So you can see I pushed left before I pushed jump here. Um, so we unmorph, we dash jump, wall jump up here. We shoot right here. Um, immediately release shoot because if we're still holding shoot we're not going to be able to morph also you want to make sure that you jump high enough so that you can morph and then roll into this hole if you jump too low you're gonna miss the uh, miss the miss the hole there so um, the shot that we did killed this top Nova and left this uh, drop for us in this case it's a super missile as you come out of this tunnel you want to unmorph run to the right shoot the door um, you can also jump if that makes it easier for you uh, you want to turn left and then damage boost off that top Nova through the door here. And then you just go ahead and collect Ice Beam. All right, now we're going to take a look at Behemoth's rooms real quick. Um, so I already mentioned, you know, this room is pretty basic. Uh, looks like he's running forward. He releases his shot around the same time that I do. He's not holding shoot here, uh, but he does jump through the door. So he has to actually kind of time this stuff here so it looks like he's shooting as he passes underneath the save station that makes sense um, but it does mean that this door opens later and he has to wait for it he runs and he jumps through and then he uh, as you can see he farms both of these upper novas this is a little slower than uh, what i showed but you do get an extra drop from it super the door and run through um, the benefit to this is you end up landing here on the edge to run through the door, so you're pretty much never going to bonk the gate, but you will have a worse door transition as a result. He shoots around the same time that I do, and then he also does a jump ball through the door. Jumps through this door. And now Behemoth Strat here is a little bit different, so he morphs, and then he does an angle up shot from here. So you can see that right there. He does an angle up shot. Then he turns around, does a wall jump morph into this hole, okay? And the angle up shot, if you position it correctly, will kill the uh, the two top Novas. He's decided he wants that last Nova's uh, drop, I guess, but he ends up skipping it, so I'm actually not sure what he was doing there. He boost probably would have been faster here, but he, he gets the super and then he jumps up and he runs through the door. Okay. After collecting Ice Beam, we want to run through this door to the left. You do want to briefly wait after shooting before you start running forward. Um, otherwise, there's a 50-50 chance that you're going to hit this door. Uh, and we really don't want to bonk the door because it will it'll be really bad in the next room. So uh, run through the door, and then you want to do as late of a jump as possible off of here so that you can attempt to mock ball through this tunnel. Uh, it's better to jump or attempt to jump later as opposed to earlier, because if you try to jump too late, what's going to happen is you'll just run off, you'll bonk this Nova, and then you can run forward and mock ball through the tunnel. It's a little time loss, but it's not too bad. If you try to jump too early, what will happen is you'll bonk here, then you'll fall, you'll hit this Nova, then you have to jump up, morph, and slowly roll through the tunnel. That's 
definitely worse than still being able to uh, quickly back up with a with a mock ball from over here. So just keep that in mind. You mock ball through the tunnel, drop down, move right, bounce left. And then once you're underneath this left block and no longer over this right block, you want to unmorph, turn right, angle down, shoot the door, and run on through. From here, what you want to do, uh, the idea is that we want to make a bridge with these two guys right here and open this door so that we can mock ball through this door. The reason we need to get enough uh, speed to mock ball here is so that we can make it underneath this gate before it closes. If you don't make it underneath the gate, what you need to do is bomb these blocks, bomb this block, jump up and slowly roll through this tunnel and it's very slow. So uh, getting this mock ball here is, is pretty dang important. The way that I like to do this room, you can see in my hand cam here, I'm doing a piano grip. Uh, that's just for comfort. You can do, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, but I do an angle down shot to kill or freeze this first platform, shoot forward to open the door, and then another angle down shot to freeze the second platform. From there, we need to do a short hop mock ball. Um, I went over the details of how these work in my speedrun basics and general movement tutorial. But the idea is that we want to jump release jump and immediately repress jump so that we don't jump too high because if we jump too high here we're going to bonk at these blocks and we're not going to be able to mock ball through the door so you jump release jump repress jump aim down mock ball through the door okay and then uh, assuming you have enough speed you'll make it under the gate then you want to immediately unmorph you can do some arm pumps but you want to shoot uh, basically as soon as you reach this block so that you can open this door and then you want to try and do a wall jump check through this door like that assuming that you get the wall jump check in the higher part of the door uh, it's also possible to to jump straight through the middle of the door and uh, i'll talk about that in just a second but assuming you get through the higher part of the door you can just hold right as you're exiting this room see how i'm just holding right and jump here and Samus will automatically kind of swing back to the left here. In this situation, I also hold angle down to break spin. You don't have to do that. Uh, it's about the same speed either way. But um, basically, hold angle down to break spin, kind of swing up here, land on this platform, ledge grab, and go up the elevator. If you came out of the middle of this door and you were holding right and jump without an angle down, Samus could actually boomerang back through the door before it closes. So that's another reason that I hold angle down there. Uh, in this situation, that wouldn't have happened because we're near the top of the door, but it can happen if you're in the, in the middle of the door. So watch out for that. Okay, let's take a quick look at Behe's rooms here. So he runs to the left. Uh, he does the mock ball through the tunnel. He opens the door. He jumps, he does his his shot to open the door a little earlier, and then what he does is he does an aim down, kind of a really short jump right here. Um, he still makes a bridge with these guys, does a short hop mock ball, under the gate, shoots the door, wall jump check through the door, jump up and grab the elevator. So uh, very similar to what I did. Uh, but, you know, still worth covering there. All right, uh, the next few rooms are pretty straightforward. There's a couple different ways you can handle them. Um, so what I like to do at the top of this elevator is hold left and shoot, and then immediately just tap up um, to briefly stop Samus before she runs forward. Then we run forward. Uh, that prevents us from bonking the door. From here, I like to release dash. Okay, so we have dash released here. We run forward. Uh, release the shot that you should have had um, entering this room. Repress dash as Samus is passing this weed on the ground here, okay? Um, from here, you can hold dash the whole time. And if done correctly, Samus should get some speed echoes just as she's exiting this tube. I like to crouch as I'm going through the door transition. Um, we would have had shoot held this whole time as well so that she has another shot primed and ready to go here. From here, you can release the shoot button, which will um, immediately move forward and open this door with, uh, I believe it's a Doppler speed if you time the crouch through the door correctly. 
from there you can just run forward and you'll get full dash speed into this room again you should have had shoot held uh, entering this door as well you then can release shoot jump forward angle down shoot to kill this cac then you want to shoot one more time to open the door on the left and then you can see here i briefly just very briefly crouch and then jump to activate the shine spark and then we fly to the left um, as the door is opening now the reason we're crouching here is because that will actually make our shine spark position uh, just very slightly higher which allows us, if we do this correctly, after bonking this door, to aim down and grab this ledge here before running through. And at that point, you wanna run and, and jump through the door. Um, now, an alternative here, you can charge your Shine Spark and then do a short spin jump and then activate the Shine Spark and fly through the door. That will actually get you a higher position on this door so that you don't have to do this uh, this aim down ledge grab here that we do the problem that I was running into with this and this is just because I suck probably um, I kept jumping too high and actually bonking right here, which is really bad um, So that's why I switched to the uh, Crouch jump shine spark here. It makes grabbing the door in the next room a little bit more difficult um, But it's better than bonking here and losing a bunch of time. So That is the alpha spark um, like I mentioned, you then want to jump through this door. Uh, since we have Ice Beam, we're going to utilize that to freeze this guy and make a platform. So we want to do one, two, three wall jumps on this right wall. Then you move to the left, shoot as you're passing this guy to freeze him. Make sure that you jump high enough to land on him as a platform. From there, you want to do an upshot and follow your upshot upwards. Down grab this ledge here then ledge grab here and then we can uh, just jump up on through here these blocks are already broken because of this upshot right here that upshot is what is actually breaking those blocks okay um so here at the top we ledge grab again ledge grab again uh, you can usually do a normal ledge grab here but i messed it up and did a straight jump so i backed it up with a down grab here ledge grab here then here, spin jump up, ledge grab here, then here, then here, then here, okay? Now this is probably the tricky part of the room. Um, there's a few different ways you can do this. Uh, the fastest way that I've found is to go up the left, freeze this third ripper up, land on him, do an up shot, jump up, down grab right here, shoot the door as you're down grabbing, and then run on through. So let's watch this in full speed. And that's the idea behind that room. Okay. Um, Behemoth handles this, uh, this short charge alpha spark stuff a little bit differently than I do. He releases dash and then uh, represses just very slightly after running to the left. I'm not sure where exactly he represses in here, um, but he handles the shots to open the doors pretty much the same way. You see that he actually gets blue quite a bit before I do right here. Um, but he also doesn't crouch through the door. He crouches after the door. There's not really anything wrong with that. And in fact, when I side by side compared these two methods, they came out literally exactly the same. Um, so really you should just do whatever is most comfortable for you. But aside from that, uh, you can see he does the jump shine spark here that I was mentioning earlier. Um, really it's, it's more a matter of, um, comfort and consistency over over anything else here so uh, you see he doesn't have to do the down grab to get on the ledge here and then he uh, jumps through the door he also freezes the ripper does the upshot uh, does ledge grabs in generally the same way that i did here and then he also freezes the third ripper up um, but he does a, a longer jump into just a single wall jump to get up whereas I was doing two wall jumps. So uh, pretty much the same stuff front to back there. Uh, but yeah, that's that's just uh, a reference for how he does it. If you're running early croc, red tower is gonna change just a little bit. So I just wanna take a look at that. Um, 
we don't have ice beam in early croc so we don't actually freeze this guy to get up uh, instead we go ahead and ledge grab over here on the right and then do a speed jump wall jump to get up here from there you want to do an upshot up here now uh, after we're already up let's grab 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 and then this is probably the uh the most difficult um strat variation in early croc as compared to late croc again we don't have ice beam so we can't actually freeze this guy to use as a platform you can still get up um but basically the fastest way to do this you need to shoot the block at the top as you're jumping up through it. Uh, you can either hold a shot here and then spin jump so that you have a, a charge shot buffered. Um, I personally found that more difficult. It's up to you whether you want to try doing that or not. But basically you want to wall jump one, two, and then you need to kind of position yourself next to this weed coming out of the wall. And you need to try and do a wall jump as far away from the wall as you possibly can. So you'll see that I actually let myself kind of move away from the wall before doing the wall jump. Then you wall jump and you need to break spin near the top and shoot out this block so that you jump up through it. And then from there, and this is the hardest part for newer runners, you need a down grab here at the top or you're not actually going to make it all the way up. Um, so that is pretty difficult to do. Uh, but that is the optimal strat there for early croc. Okay. Alternatively, you can jump up, shoot the block, fall back down, and then jump up again. That is a that is an option for you. Um, I don't recall if doing a hero shot from here with wave and spacer will work or not. There is a possibility that it would, um, but if it does, I, I don't have an example of that, so I'm sorry, I, I can't show that. But uh, that's Red Tower in Early Croc. Okay, so as we enter Hellway here, you can see that I have shot health. I'm also angling down, that's just a result of, um, I was arm pumping when I was going through the door. The reason that we're holding shot, or shoot, is so that we can freeze this guy. Uh, this is a newer strat, saves I think like 10 frames or something. All right, so jump across after freezing this guy, uh, land on him. I do a shot here. I think that's just to break spin uh, so that I can land and jump a little earlier. You want to jump and uh, damage boost off of these little spiny things here. They're basically just spikes. You want to land as far to the right as you can here, and then you want to do another damage boost over to the right here. Um, if you can, boost off of this thing here and do a little bit of a down boost and then back. So see how I was holding... Uh, left or forward to get a downward damage boost and then I boost backwards that will be a little faster if you can do that correctly and still land on the edge over here if you're struggling with that the hitbox on this thing is kind of weird these spikes are much more consistent so you can just move further to the right and boost off of these spikes instead and um, that's just a little bit slower as we land, we want to be holding shoot so that a shot will come out immediately upon landing. Um, that will also have a, a Doppler speed effect on it, so it opens the door early enough that we can just go ahead and run through. And you do want to be angling down as you run into this next room. The reason for that is so that we can release shoot coming out of the door, which will automatically break that block. From there, you want to run forward into the hole, and then after you bonk this wall, right here you want to aim down now it's important not to aim down too early because if you aim down too early you're actually going to gap skip here and you'll land over here and we don't want that we actually want to fall down through the hole so run into the hole bonk aim down shoot and then if you want to do the optimal strat here what you want to do is morph and then hold right okay see how i'm already holding right right here we're holding right so that we can immediately move to the right and not bonk on this platform here. Um, and this is where it gets a little tricky. After you've moved far enough right so that you're not going to bonk on this platform, you need to switch back and hold left. The down shot that we did up here as we were entering the hole will clear this hole down here so that we can weave right, left, okay, fall down through the hole here, delay very slightly, and then press right again so that we can weave underneath this slug guy, this zero is what they're called, 
and not bonk here, okay? That is pretty, pretty specific. It's not as bad as it looks, but it is, it is kind of difficult. So you wanna weave right, left, right, left. You wanna bounce on this corner here and then immediately unmorph and shoot the door with a super missile and then run on through. Um, if you're having trouble with the weave, you can land um, on this platform. Like you can do like a soft morph onto this platform and then roll off to the right, left, back, right. That's a little easier than uh, doing the full weave down like this. Um, alternatively, you can also just do spin jumps down. Uh, you know, there, there's a few different ways to do it. Um, if you are struggling with this weave on a very consistent basis, it may be a good idea to find something more consistent for you before attempting it again. Um, but again, ultimately, it's it's going to be up to you there. So let's switch over to Behemoth's run here for just a minute. So um, as far as Hellway goes, he doesn't do the strat to freeze this guy. Uh, he just jumps up, damage boosts off of these spikes. Uh, he does a lower damage boost like I was talking about earlier. He lands over here. And he does a spin jump over these guys, uh, which he needs to do, otherwise his iframes would run out and he would bonk one of them. Land on this platform, run forward. He does do the later D-boost off of these spikes instead of the earlier one, like I mentioned. And then uh, he does basically the same thing exiting this room. He opts to do the soft morph onto the platform that I mentioned just a minute ago. Rolls right, rolls left, rolls right, rolls left. He does do the unmorph off the bottom here on the corner, shoots the super and runs through the door. Okay, time to collect these power bombs here. So entering this room, you just wanna run forward, jump, damage boost off of these left, or, or these right uh, spongy guys to the left. As you land, you wanna hold shoot to buffer a shot and then select missiles as you're collecting the power bombs. The reason that we're selecting missiles here is so that uh, we have one less input that we need to do to get to power bombs here. So quickly select power bombs, morph, lay a power bomb next to the statue. And then you see that I roll back to the right, uh, turn left, unmorph, run forward and attempt to do a little mock ball through here as the blocks are exploding. I went a little too early so I actually bonk here and lose my speed. It's not a huge deal, um, but you can save a couple frames if you do it successfully. From here, we just want to unmorph, run to the left, and grab the missile pack. And then what we want to do is uh, run back to the right, jump over the statue. We'll land on this block. Then you want to jump and damage boost the rest of the way across the room. And then you actually want to bonk this door on your way out of the room. So bonk this door, then hold dash and right. And what that will do is allow you to release dash in this room and get the right vertical speed so that with dash released you can just jump up and you'll have the right vertical speed to get up onto this platform every single time if you avoid the door bonk here your dash speed is going to be a, a variable value it's not going to be the same every single time and most of the time you're not going to have the right vertical speed value to get all the way up to this platform so that's why we bonk that door um, once you get up to this platform, you want to do an upshot to break these blocks, and then you just want to spin jump up. If you follow the upshot uh, quickly enough and it was in the right position, it will also break these two blocks right here, which is really nice. From there, you want to ledge grab here, ledge grab here, do another upshot, and quickly follow it up. Um, from there, you want to angle up, shoot this CAC, and then do another shot on this CAC to kill it, grab the super drop, and then do an angle up shot on this cac to kill it as well. This up shot down here was specifically to freeze this cac up here so that it would already be frozen and we can just kill it with one more shot right here, okay? So we do that shot, grab that super missile, ledge grab here. Um, I do not ledge grab here for a couple of reasons. Um, mainly, it's uh, it'll fix the door a little bit if you jump a little higher and also, um, my entry into this room is different than Behemoth's in the sense that I am not worried as much about getting into the room as quickly as possible, and I'm more worried about making sure that I get the right speed entering the room, and I'll talk about why that is uh, coming up next. So, 
Um, I'm going to switch over to Behemoth now. Okay, so uh, Behemoth does roughly the same thing in this room that I did. He breaks this orb with a missile instead of a regular beam shot. Um, again, he's he seems less concerned with conserving missiles, and that's fine. Um, he does get the mock ball across the statue. He grabs the missile pack, and then um, back to the right here. He also does a de-boost across the rest of the room, bonks the door on his way out. Presumably, he releases dash so that he can get that jump up. Looks like he skipped a ledge grab right here that's fine um aside from that he does basically the same thing that i did so uh up shot here angle up shot shoot to kill the cat grab the super angle up shot down grab grab this super ledge grab and then what he does is he um tightly ledge grabs here with a super shot and then he basically immediately runs through the door i think he does a delayed dash press right here so that he can get basically a, a one tap short charge entering this room one more thing that i think we should cover is uh zost strat here so because zost earlier already went down to grab the alpha power bombs obviously he doesn't want to go down again because uh, that would be a waste of time for him so he enters this room with super missiles selected looks like um he can just do a really nice speedy jump all the way up the room like that. So he doesn't need to worry about farming these cacks at all because uh, he's already full on supers for his point in the run right here. Um, so he's just had enough dash speed that he just times his jump here again, wall jump, ledge grab, super, and then he sets up his entry into this room as well. Okay, so I mentioned that my entry into this room is pretty specific, so I'm gonna break it down here. Um, essentially, we wanna open the door um, and then I do stutters to the left so if you look at my d-pad inputs here i do left 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 okay and then i do a one tap on the dash to enter the door um, the reason that we're doing this is because we want a specific amount of dash speed and um, the right setup for a, a short charge as well so we enter the door and then you can see that i actually switch to a piano grip here um, that's a comfort thing uh, you might have a better time doing something else. Um, but basically, so I am piano gripping and then I hold down and left and shoot as I'm entering this room. I'm holding down and left because that's going to um, buffer our jump morph a little bit to make it a little bit easier. Um, so I'll try to explain that. But the reason that we're holding shoot, this is actually really important. Um, we want to shoot this hopper on entry to stun him so that his position will be favorable for us through the rest of the room. So see, as the shot connects with him, he actually stops moving. See that? That's very important here. So we shoot that guy, and then, since we're already angling down, we can also do another shot, which will freeze this yapping maw, which will reduce the lag overall. Um, that's not a huge deal, but it is an optimization that I do here. From there, another thing to note is that after shooting... Okay, so let me back up. So I'm holding dash as I enter this room to get our second tap. Samus's current sprite position is basically right before a, a short charge frame window. So we're holding dash so that we can get the short charge tap as we enter the room. And then after we shoot this first hopper, I release dash. Sorry, I know this is really complicated, but um, it is important. Uh, and there, there are different ways to do this room as well, so I'll, I'll try and get into those as well. We freeze this yapping maw, and then I mentioned earlier that I'm holding down and left on the D-pad here. You can use an angle down on the D-pad in door transitions to kind of in a weird way buffer your first down press when you are jumping without needing to have the d-pad angle down cause samus to stop because if you d-pad angle down while samus is running forward she'll crouch for a frame and then continue running forward but if you do it in a door transition that doesn't happen so right here i jump and then notice that uh, right as i'm jumping i release left but i'm still holding down okay which kind of buffers Samus's um, aim down pose so that I kind of only have to release and repress down once instead of needing to, like if I were holding left and not down here, for example, I would have to jump 
and then press down and then release down and then press down again to get the morph. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, it is kind of a weird thing to, uh, to get used to doing, but it is really beneficial if you can get used to it. Now, the reason we're doing this jump ball here is so that Samus will take damage from the spikes. We can lay the power bomb and then we want to unmorph while we're still holding left. And we also want to hold an angle while we're unmorphing, okay? That will put Samus into this um, blue keep pose. So she still has speed booster active and we can kill these hoppers on our way down. So we kill all three hoppers grouped together after unmorphing like this. That's going to greatly reduce lag. And then uh, the last piece of this room, I'm the only person that I've seen actually do this, but I did find it beneficial. Um, you want to do a spin jump back to the right, hold forward so we get a, a downward damage boost off of these spikes. The damage gives us iframes right as the power bomb is exploding, which will further reduce lag. And then at the end of Samus's downward boost here, you wanna hold down to aim down, turn left, and then you can kind of wiggle down through this platform here. I messed it up in this run, um, but if you do it correctly, you'll essentially get a quick drop down here with reduced lag and it's, it's pretty dang fast. So from here, you wanna collect the power bombs, and then uh, the last bit of this room, uh, this jump is really annoying. So depending on how much dash speed you get for this jump, if you hold right the whole time, Samus will sometimes make it up just fine, but sometimes she'll hit a spike right here and she'll boost back down into the, into the fake flower here. So because of that, um, I release right during this jump and then I repress it after coming out of the flower. Then you want a ledge grab here jump to collect the drop. I'm going to talk about that in just a second too. Um, damage boost. You want to try and get a low damage boost off the spikes. If you do it correctly, you can land on the edge before the door. And also, um, if your power bomb earlier in the room, let me just go back and show this. So we laid a power bomb right here. If this power bomb is far enough to the right, and you kill the hoppers in time, the power bomb will actually preemptively open the door for you. In this case, it wasn't open. So after landing, I just wait briefly and then run through the door. Not a huge deal. Okay, so I mentioned that I was going to talk about this drop here. Um, previously in the tutorial, I mentioned that hopper enemies normalize RNG. So these guys are actually normalizing the RNG as we enter the room. What that means is that if our entry and then our strat through this room is normalized, we're going to get roughly the same uh, pool of drops every single time. Now, humans aren't frame perfect and also lag um, contributes to the, the drop RNG that we're going to get. This isn't going to be 100% consistent of a strat. However, I noticed um, I used to do a different strat. I didn't like the jump ball into the spikes here. Um, but I noticed that if I did this strat, I was pretty likely to get at least one super from these hoppers. So I actually switched the strat because, like I've mentioned a few times already in this, uh, in this tutorial, resource management is extremely important, especially with supers throughout this entire run. So this super is actually very important for us. There are some situations where we would only have three supers here. And in that situation, we absolutely would need this super drop leaving this room, or we would have to do extra cac attack farms before going up the elevator after leaving this room. So that's why I do that version of the strat. It is a little bit harder, but I find the super drop rate with it to be very beneficial. As you're leaving this room, uh, you just wanna do a wall jump off of this platform here, up to the elevator, stop on a dime, and then go up the elevator. Okay, so I mentioned that Behemoth's entry here is really aggressive. Um, he doesn't wait, he doesn't stutter, he just does a one tap through the door. He does shoot the hopper on entry, but then he does, uh, this is what I used to do. He does a short hop speed ball right here, and then he holds an angle after laying the power bomb and unmorphs so that he can then jump up and kill the hoppers like this. 
I used to find this uh, much easier than the jump ball strat that I covered. But again, notice that he doesn't get any super missiles here. Um, and I used to get super missiles sometimes doing this strat, but eventually that just stopped. I just would never ever get any supers here, which is why I ended up switching to the other strat. So that's why I don't do this strat personally. If you're finding it more comfortable and consistent for you, you can you know route in other super farms as necessary in your runs, uh, but that's, that's ultimately gonna be a choice that you make. Um, one other thing that you can do, and I don't have a visual example of this, but you could also just um, short charge and essentially keep your speed booster, run to the left, crouch to charge a shine spark, morph to lay the power bomb, and then unmorph and do an angle up spark uh, to kill all of these hoppers. That is definitely an option. Um, it's the older strat. It is slower, but it's really easy and very consistent as a result. So. That is something else that you can do. As far as the rest of this room goes, I think Behemoth does roughly the same thing uh, that I did. One benefit to the short hop speed ball strat that he did is that the power bomb gets laid further to the left. So this damage boost is actually much easier to get over and land on a platform without worrying about falling before the door, but it will also never open the door. So it's kind of a trade off there. From there, you just run forward and jump through wall jump and up the elevator we go. All right, a couple more rooms here on our way to wreck the ship. This room is pretty basic. Uh, you can see that I'm holding down and right here. That's to try and buffer a jump morph. Um, we need to lay a power bomb to open this door. Uh, the fastest way to do this in my experience is to do a, a dash jump up to the ceiling and lay it up near the ceiling. The closer to the door is the better, obviously. Um, but you know, if, if you're messing it up, just lay the power bomb as soon as you can and uh, open the door as quickly as you can. The most important part of this room is that we want to be holding a charge shot as we jump through this door, and we also want dash speed jumping through this door. So you can see that I'm charging a shot here. I wait for the power bomb to open the door, and I dash jump up through the door. This room has changed quite a bit the past couple of years. Um, I'm just going to cover the optimal strat. There are some other strats uh, you can look at older older videos to, to get some other ideas on, on things to do. But personally, I found that uh, this strat is not only optimal, but it also, um, after some, some practice and getting comfortable with it, it's actually probably the, the easier strat in my opinion. Um, but yeah, essentially, so we had a charge shot held. We want to um, grab this ledge as early as we can. You see that I actually held angle down to break spin here. Um, that's to make sure that our charge is absolutely ready to go. Um, the reason that we're charging a shot here is so that this speedy jump up here is going to have a pseudo screw. Um, so Samus is flashing yellow there and she'll actually kill this crab with the pseudo screw. So that's why we wanted that charge shot. Now this jump here is pretty particular in that if you go further right, it's going to manip a key hunter up above in a favorable way. So if you do as tight of a ledge grab here as you can, you're actually not going to get the pattern from the key hunter that you want. Um, I think this was actually a little bit too tight, but let's go ahead and take a look. After you ledge grab here, you wanna jump up here, do an upshot, ledge grab here, and come over here to the right. If the key hunter was where we would want it to be, it would actually be over here on the left in our way. And so you can see that after I shoot up to break these blocks and I jump up, I select a missile as well so that if the key hunter is over here, I'm ready to kill it with a missile. Since it's not, I just go ahead and switch to power bombs, run to the right, and we want to lay a power bomb anywhere in this vicinity. Uh, basically, you want it to be lined up with this, uh, this line here. If it's further left over here, it's not going to open the power bomb door over here on the right. Uh, so, so keep that in mind. We lay the power bomb, and then from there, uh, what you want to do is select missiles again, run to the left, gap skip across this or jump across it. Uh, the gap skip's going to be a little faster. And then we want to kill this key hunter with the missile. Um, we want to kill that both because it will be in our way and also because the earlier we kill it, the less lag we're going to be dealing with. And then you want to run over to the left. You can run all the way to the door if you're struggling with this short charge. It is kind of a, a tight short charge here. 
um, but optimally you want to run somewhere along this platform turn around and then you want to stutter and do I, I do a three tap short charge here so one two three then you want to charge your short charge and do a shot you can delay your shot until you're doing the gap skip uh, that's actually a little safer than what i did if you shoot on this slope like i did sometimes samus is actually just going to fall off and that really sucks so if you can train yourself to do your shot a little later like during the gap skip for example you want to do that um, but the reason that we're charging this shot here is so that we can have a charge beam ready to go for ocean fly so as you run through the door, um, you want to jump over to the right. And then what I do is I look at this background visual cue right here. I want to be around this spot in the room. So we jump to the right. You want to shoot. Then you want to activate your shine spark. And just as the beam is going off screen, that's when you want to use the shine spark. Depending on where you are positioned in this room, when you shoot and break spin and do the shine spark, the window for a successful ocean fly is going to change quite a bit. I found that this position um, is the most consistent for me. That may not be the, the case for you, um, so I would recommend playing around with it. You may see people um, use a missile or a super missile to do ocean fly instead. The missile has a smaller window than the charge beam does. The super missile I think has a larger window, but it's a lot harder to react to. And also we want to conserve our supers. So I wouldn't recommend either of those. I honestly would just go with this charge beam strat um, if it were me. So you do want to collect this missile on your way through to ocean fly. If you miss it, like if you shine spark over it, you're going to have to grab it on your way back from wrecked ship. And that's actually quite a big time loss. So we do want to grab it on our way. And then hopefully, um, if you timed the shine spark and the shot correctly, the door will be open enough that you'll be able to shine spark through and make it all the way across here to this door with the shine spark. So that's called Ocean Fly. Um, I would greatly recommend learning how to do it. Um, one more thing to keep in mind, if you are running early croc, you can skip Ocean Fly and just grapple across here instead because you would have grapple beam. That will conserve some energy, and some people say that it's faster. In my testing, it was about the same. Um, I preferred to keep doing Ocean Fly when I ran early croc, just because it was. I liked the consistency between the routes, um, and I, I knew that someday I was going to be doing late croc again. But the grapple beam is a, a viable alternative for you if you're struggling with Ocean Fly. In the case that you're doing the grapple beam, or that you bonk this door for Ocean Fly, what you should do is essentially run through this door uh align with this door open the door and then run through the door and after running through the door that's when you would hold dash and then you would just do a um, two or three tap short charge coming through here you would charge your shine spark right around here and then uh, you would you would jump up and shine spark from here. You don't want to do a, a ground shine spark from over here because these slopes right here will sometimes actually stop Samus if she bonks into them with a shine spark. Um, so you don't you don't want to do a grounded shine spark from here. You want to jump and then shine spark. Um, but uh, but yeah. So that's the idea behind Ocean Fly. Let's just take a quick look at how Behemoth does these rooms. So he also lays the power bomb up next to the ceiling. He does a straight jump uh, charge beam into the door. He does a down grab. He does a pseudo screw on the crab, just like I did. And then, oops, um, you can see right here, uh, this key hunter is kind of, it's over on the left, like I was mentioning. So um, that is because his jump around here was a little bit further to the right than mine. That's, that's really the only reason why. Um, because he has the opportunity to kill this key hunter with a missile, that's going to reduce lag even more. So he kills the key hunter with the missile. He lays a power bomb. He kills this key hunter with the missile. He does a short charge. He charges a shot as he's going through the door. He jumps, he fires a shot, and then he shine sparks. And he makes it through the door just like I did. So pretty much the same idea there, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's Behemoth's rooms. So as you're shine sparking across to wreck ship here, 
uh, you want to select super missiles, you can either do that with an auto deselect, which is what I do, um, or after you shoot this door open with the super missile, you can just switch to power bombs. Um, either way is going to be just fine. But after crashing into the door, you'll want to shoot the super as soon as the shine spark animation crash animation finishes, and then just run through the door. In this room, I hold a charge shot. And then after I pass these set of bugs right here is when I release the charge shot. I also do, I think, four or five arm pumps here. One, two, three, four, five. And then I do some more arm pumps after releasing the shot. Um, you do need to be a little bit careful not to release your shot too early or do too many arm pumps too fast, or you can actually bonk this door before it's finished opening, um, and that, that will lose you some time. So watch out for that. There's a couple ways you can do this next room. What I like to do here is go for a flatly turnaround off of this edge here. So the way that that works, uh, basically you need to turn left at the right time and you also need to have uh, no frame gaps between your right and left turn, if I remember correctly. Um, right here, I think I turned left a little bit too late. Yeah, so see how Samus is already falling off here when I turn? So it didn't quite work there. Um, but if you turn at the right time, what will happen is Samus will kind of slide down as she's turning left and then perfectly align with the stairs so that she doesn't actually fall at all. And that's really fast. If you do happen to fall like this, that's fine. Um, basically, the idea is that we want to get down this room as quickly as possible. So uh, you'll just fall, you'll land on the stairs. Um, spin jumps off the stairs down around the corners are usually a little faster than just running off and falling. So keep that in mind. And then also we want to select power bombs um, so that we can lay a power bomb when we land on these stairs down here. You want to lay the power bomb pretty much as soon as you land. And then as you get down here, uh, the power bomb is going to release a block or reveal a, a block right here that will break. We go ahead and roll through that block. So just looking at it in full speed. Like that. After you roll through this little uh, tunnel that we revealed here, you want to unmorph as you come out, run down these stairs, and then um, if you jump late enough with enough speed and low enough, you can make it uh, jumping from over here, clear across past these spikes. This is a little bit uh, particular in the way that this jump has to be done. If you don't have enough speed, you're going to land on these spikes. Uh, you can back that up by doing a quick mock ball unmorph right here. These spikes won't actually damage you because there's no power in wreck ship right now, so you can touch these and, and not have a problem. If you're struggling to get the jump across because it, it is pretty, uh, pretty difficult here, um, I would err on the side of jumping too low and doing the mock ball because if you jump too high, you're going to bonk right here and that's much slower. So uh, that's also something to keep in mind. Um, after you land, you just want to do short jumps over these spikes like that. And then um, you just want to jump up and collect this missile pack. There is a specific jump that you can do where you jump and then turn to collect it. And if you're high enough or turn in, in the right way, you can actually get back down without ever landing on this upper platform. Um, and that will also save a few frames, but it is pretty specific. Um, so no worries if you're having trouble with that. So you can see here that we land and then we just jump back across these spikes. Uh, you want to jump over four sets of spikes and then you want to run forward up the stairs and then do a mock ball here. From there what you want to do is drop down. You want to unmorph as you're about to land here so that you don't bounce. Um, you don't want to unmorph as you're falling or you'll reset Samus's fall speed and she'll take uh, longer to land right there. And then right here what you want to do is an angle down shot as you're falling followed by a down shot and a down back to get down into this hole. The angle down shot is going to clear the blocks over here. The down shot is going to clear the blocks right here. So you down back so you can get in position into the hole. And then you just want to roll to the right, fall down. Um, as long as you do the angle down shot in the right position, all of these blocks down here will be broken so you can just fall the way down through. Unmorph, run to the left, uh, jump, aim down, shoot your super to open this door, 
and then fall through the door. You do want to fall through the door on the left side and facing left in 100%. And the reason for that is because we actually want to go left and then right. So uh, do a short spin jump to land down here. I usually try to land around this uh, vertical post here. Um, and then what, what you want to do is a short charge. Uh, some people do a three tap. I think I usually did a two tap. Uh, the two tap is pretty tight. So if you're struggling with that, you can do a three tap instead. Uh, but basically you just want to run forward, tap, tap. So see um, my dash press over here, A, A, and I'm just holding the second one. And then after you get blue, you want to jump over this robot and then do a speed ball down through this tunnel. Um, there are some blocks right here that we need to break, so that's why we want the speed ball. Then you also want to have super missiles selected at this point. Unmorph, angle up, shoot the eye door with the super. And then this part, you can actually do something similar to uh, the, the crate door entry that I mentioned. So uh, what I do is I like to jump up here and then turn left, aim up, shoot the door as it's open, and then do a turnaround spin jump into the door and wall jump check the door to get in. So let's just take a quick look at Behemoth's rooms. So uh, basically what he's doing here, and I did want to mention this, um, he jumps through this door rather than doing the turnaround off the edge that I mentioned before. Um, this is a little bit slower optimally, but it is more consistent. So I think that's why he does it. Um, so by jumping through the door, he can just uh, get down around this corner and land a little bit earlier. And then from here, uh, he does more or less the same thing that I do. So, you know, lay the power bomb as soon as you land on these stairs. And then roll through this block right here, jump across. Uh, there's the mock ball or the bounce ball that I mentioned. Okay, and then just jump across the spikes, collect the missile pack, jump over the spikes, and then jump up the stairs, do the mock ball, angle down, down back into the hole after the down shot, select your supers, jump, aim down, super the door, fall through the left side. And then I think he does a three tap here. Super the eye door and then jump through the door. So yeah, um, that brings us to Fantoon. I am going to do my best to uh, cover Fantoon in his own video. Um, I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do that yet. I have a few ideas. I'm not going to be able to use this exact same format for it uh, just because Fantoon has a lot of patterns and uh, I only have you know a, a limited number of runs that I could reference. I think it would be better for me to open the practice ROM and show each pattern that way. Uh, that's what I've done in my previous Fantoon tutorials, but I'll figure that out. That will be the next video when I figure out what I'm going to do with it. So as far as uh, today's video, uh, again, we covered the rest of Upper Norfair and then the movement here to uh, Rex ship to Fantoon. So hope that you got some value out of this and uh, I'll see you next time.